A wise man once said, the future belongs to those who are working hard today. I then asked myself the very question, what is the future of Africa? What is the future of the black continent? What is the future of the black race? My name is Efoso Zaro. I'm the author of Zaro Fury, and you are listening to Zaro Fury Podcast. Wow. Hello everybody, welcome to the Ozaro Fury Podcast. My name is Efosa. This is episode 5 of the Ozaro Fury Podcast. And I think this is the final episode of the first season. Um, Since I started this podcast, uh, I think uh, it's been an interesting journey. And uh, most of the conversation has been a solo conversation. Uh, it's been an interesting journey. And... Um, I started this podcast as a way for me to kind of put some of my thoughts and my book out there as an audio and also for people to get to know me as a person, as an author, um, just to get to know the guy behind the book or the guy behind some of the ideas in the book. And uh, this is the final episode of this season. So hopefully in the next episode I, I um, my hope and dream is to maybe find a guest uh someone a co-host that might maybe enjoy some of the topic and some of the uh the subject uh, I would try to uh bring to to people who are listening to this podcast you know so find someone that might be interested in psychology and in those uh field um, maybe have them as a as a guest or as an interview in uh, in the coming season, and uh, that is uh, some of my plans for the future of this podcast. And um, so to quickly just uh, round up the final season of this podcast, this episode is titled African Psychology. Why we need African psychology, really. And uh, in, bef- before I start, and I want to really address something really important to me and as African. And I just wanted to quickly read a quote in a, a book that is going to be published. You know, we don't have a date yet, but it's already in the process of getting a publication. And that is specifically written and 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 to expand on the idea of why we need african psychologists and this is a book that is going to really expand on the on the idea of african psychology how we need to understand african psychology and why is it important for us to understand african psychology that is another book that is in the making uh, I cannot give you guys everything now because we're still in the process of of finding the right publication for the book. But yeah, it's something you should look out for. It's out there coming soon. So, like I said, this is the final episode of this first season of the Ozero Theory. And um, I want to quickly say this. You know, why do we need an African psychology? That is the biggest question. Why do we need African psychology? So, like I said, I got a quote I written in a book that is going to be published soon. And it stated like this. To know Africa is to understand its people. And to understand its people, you must know African psychology. I know the word African psychology might seem a bit too familiar with people who are listening African psychology has been a topic that has been around, I think, since the maybe 80s. When African-Americans were going through a lot of racial period in America. But the problem with African-American definition of African psychology comes down to the experience. The experience between African-Americans in Africa, in Africa, and Africa across the globe. So... The problem with African-Americans definition of psychology, it becomes like uh, an umbrella that is covering the whole idea of African psychology. And what do I mean by that? 
when African Americans use the word African psychology, which they have a right to do, but the problem then comes from the differences in experience. African Americans define African psychology to be a psychology of African Americans, a psychology that study the experiences of Africans in America. Like I said, they have a right to use that term, African psychology. But when it comes to Africa in general view, that can be a problem, a big, big problem. That's why the terms African psychology has become something that people don't take serious when they hear the word African psychology. A lot of white counterpart always have this preconceived notion when African psychologists are mentioned, they see it as another African try to be relevant. So another African uh, writings trying to find fault and, and relevancy in a subject that is already being accepted or defined that there is no need to ethnically define psychology. There's no need for a racial psychology. That's most answers you get from white counterparts when they hear the terms African psychology. The big question for, for a lot of white people is like, why African? Why do we have to pair African with psychology? And as a research and as a writer myself, I have been finding it very, very, very difficult to stand on the terms African psychology, to use the word African psychology, because it has been a term that has been thrown around for many years now by so-called black scholars in America that has used the term African psychology just to define their particular experience about race and encounter in America. And then when someone of African descent try to explain or use the term African psychology, it pulls us back to the American experience, even though not all Africans have had the African American experience. The terms African psychology always tend to pull us back to racial discrimination or what have you. You know, those those things are always associated with African psychology which on one hand is needed we Africans need to understand African Americans experience because it's a unique experience and there is a place and need for it in within the African psychology but the African American experience shouldn't be in the umbrella or the concept in which we define African psychology African-American experience can be a study of its own, an approach that we can coin within an African psychology. But African-American experience shouldn't dictate the overall concept or the framework in which we have to define African psychology because, like I said in the earlier statement, that not all Africans have had the African-American experiences. A group of people were taken out of Africa to America. Some were left in the Caribbean. Some were left in Haiti. Some were left in Brazil. Some remained in Africa. So the terms African psychology is being used or thrown around by a lot of African American scholars is a problem in itself. Because when we of African descent try to identify our struggle or identify the overall psychological worldview of African subconsciously pulled towards the African-American racial experience, even though that is not what we intended, you know? And that's why the word African psychology has always been a word that is often used by so-called African-American scholars to define their specific experience. And when this word get thrown around, that's where I find it a problem that the terms African psychology has been used loosely by Africans Americans without 
taking into consideration the bigger impact, without taking into the consideration that not all Africans have had the African-American experience. That is where I find the African-American scholars a bit naive and a bit selfish, using the African psychology too loosely when we are defining the general worldview of a particular group of people under the framework of understanding behavior or cultural worldview of a race of people. That's when an African psychology becomes a word that is too used. So what is my take on this? Like I said, to understand Africa or to know Africa means to understand its people. To understand its people means you have to know African psychology. And when I mean African psychology, I'm, let me be clear and specific. I'm not talking about the African-American psychology. That is a different psychology. It's a psychologic approach within an African psychology that could be studied, could be looked into specifically to understand the experience of African-Americans within an African psychology. African psychology shouldn't be defined by the African-American experience. African psychology is the body framework of understanding the general African psychological, cultural, and philosophical worldview, not the African-Americans. African-Americans could be study as an approach within an African psychology. An African-American has no moral obligation and rights to define the African psychology based on their own experiences. So an African psychology should be a psychology that applies to all Africans, both in America in Caribbean, in Haiti, in Brazil, in Africa, regardless of where they're found. African psychology should be able to apply to those people. And it shouldn't be studied from a lens of an African-American experience because not all Africans has experienced what African-Americans have encountered in terms of slavery and segregation. So we cannot study African psychologists from the African-American experience. No, it's completely wrong in all front. And I think that's where a lot of African scholars have got it wrong. That African-American experience is an African-American experiences that is needed, definitely, is needed within an African psychology but it does not has the moral obligation to dictate for all African globally the experience or the way in which we have to study ourselves. No, we shouldn't understand the world from a, a lens of Louis Farrakhan. We shouldn't understand the world from a lens of Martin Luther King. We cannot understand the world from the lens of Malcolm X. We cannot understand the world from the lens of Black Panther. No, those heroes are important. They are very important within an African history and within African psychology, but they are a segment within the overall African psychology. They can be a branch within African psychology, but they shouldn't be the overall or the, the, the defining statement that we use to define African psychology. And African psychology should be a psychology that applies to African regardless where they are found. We must understand that African psychology is a study of African behavior, cultures, and worldview. That can apply to any African anywhere. Whether they are in Brazil, they are in China, Hong Kong, North Korea, Japan, Italy, Spain, regardless of where they found. African psychology should be able to explain 
the behavior and the culture and the worldview of African people, including the African Americans, without reducing it to a specific experience of a group of people. So that is my take on the the way the African American has used the word African psychology too loosely that has made us a subject of ridicule within the psychological um, community. Because whenever we mention the word African psychology, white people are baffled. For us to use the word African psychology when there's no scientific basis to back any claim, when there's no theoretical research to support our claim, so whenever we use the word African psychology, why people just see it as Africans are just, they see it as us having fun and playing with words that has no meaning or maybe they see us as ignorant to even understand the word psychology in the first place. Because if we have to attach Africans to the word psychology, there must be some theoretical evidence or scientific proof that we can attach A psychology should be psychology, regardless of whatever it is or whatever is found. Psychology is a human brain. And that is why I have a problem with the African-American scholars who have been using the African psychology too loosely just to define and explain their particular experience. It's, It's a risk. We cannot take that risk. African psychology should be African psychology that pertain to all Africans, regardless of where they found. So African psychology is something that we're going to really dive into in the next season of Ozar Fury podcast. I hope that in the next season that we, I can find someone that will be willing to have this conversation with me and to dive into the idea of psychologies, I wrote to Zara Fury that can be used to understand why we need African psychology. The fundamental problem that is affecting Africans today is not a problem of race, it's not a problem of economic challenges, it's not a problem of politics, it's not a problem of tribe, it's a problem of psychology. That is the fundamental problem that is affecting Africans today. It's a problem of psychology. All other problems listed earlier or before are just minor problems. Africa has riches, natural riches. That is a well-known fact. Undebatable. You can, we can't debate that. It's a well-known fact that Africa has riches, abundance of riches in natural wealth but to take those riches and turn africa into a powerhouse or superpower like that of china or european even a coming superpower like india for example africa we need to understand psychology africa we need to develop its psychology You cannot develop a nation without understanding psychology. Psychology is basically the understanding of human brain, human behavior. And that's what psychology is. Psychology should be able to define and understand what makes people tick. What makes people behave a certain way. And what makes civilization thrive. What makes civilization fall. What makes a country progressive. What we'll make a country digressive? Why is a failure in a country? Why is a progress in a country? Why there is a development in a country? Why there is lack of development? Those are psychological questions, not economics, not tribes, not religious questions, but psychology. And a country that does not develop psychology, they are wasting their time. A country without psychology is a banana republic. And Africa tends to be one of those, a banana republic. You cannot develop a society without understanding psychology. You must understand what makes human think the way they think. What makes human act the way they act. What makes human behave the way they behave. 
so that whoever is developing a society or is about to build a society or build a civilization, then you know the approach to take to build a civilization. That's what psychology is. And no civilization has ever been a civilized society without psychologists. So Africans hasn't got to the understanding of psychology yet. And if we're thinking of the future, Africa without psychology is a banana republic. Just like what is happening today in most African countries. The extreme poverty in most African countries is heartbreaking. Most people don't understand why these African countries are just poor, even though they have resources. A country like Nigeria, for example, which could be a, the next powerhouse or superpower in Africa, that country has no direction. Why? Because there is a lack of psychology in a country. When you don't have psychologists in a country, a country doesn't have direction. And that's why a lot of white people think Africans are just less intelligent. That's what a lot of Western psychologists say. Is it true that Africans are less intelligent? Well, not necessarily. Africans can be intelligent as everybody else, but they need to be taught. And the information has to be passed down from generation to generation. They need to be taught. And a country that is unwilling to learn, such country is not ready for development. Because what are you trying to develop? You can't develop idiot. You can't develop stupidity. So it's only the psychology that can give you answers to those questions. Without psychology in a country, such country, they're wasting time when they're thinking about development. You cannot develop a country that does not know itself. What are you going to develop? Imagine you wake up in the morning. You put on your shoes. You put on your suit. You put on your trousers. You put on your skirt. And you walk out of the house. And in the midst of you walking out of the house, you got to a point and you start asking yourself, where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you heading? What is the destination? That is exactly what is happening now in Africa countries. Without psychologists, you don't know where you're going. Without psychologists, you don't know what you're doing. Psychologists are the one to tell you, here is what you do. And that is what exactly is happening in African countries that this country don't know what they're doing because they don't have African psychologists. And you cannot develop a society without a psychologist. You need good leaders and good psychologists. And by far, every good leader should be a psychologist. When you look at the great men of history, Gandhi, the list goes on. One way or the other, they have applied psychology in their approach of developing society. And without psychology, you're wasting your time. If Africa does not understand at this present time in history that they need African psychology, they are wasting their time. No country develops without psychologies. You don't develop when you don't know yourself. That's just the truth. You must know yourself in order for you to develop. You don't develop when you don't know where you're going. Develop to what? Development means progress. Progress means movement from one particular place to another. How can you move from one particular place to another when you don't know where you're going? And that is the fundamental problem of Africa today. It's not a problem of economics. No. Africa is too rich. There's just too much money in Africa. The population is there. Nigeria has 200 million population. Think about that for a second. 200 million young people. The potentiality of Nigeria to become the great superpower in the next decade is there. Every leader knows he needs psychology. When you come to European or Western country, we Africans, we come to Western country, we are baffled. we like, wow, look at how everything is so organized. Oh my God, traffic lights, supermarket, 
job. We are so fascinated by the organization skill of the white men. But how many of us has ever questioned how the white men got so organized? How many of us has ever questioned what makes the white men so organized? No country can be a developed nation or organized without psychology. So this is just a quick preview what is to come in the second season of this podcast. It's going to get hotter. And the conversation is going to get hotter as we're moving up. And it's going to be a lot of debate and a lot of interesting conversation. Because if we really want to talk about Africa, we have to talk about the fundamental problem. What is holding that continent back? We have to talk about it. We have to be frank and we have to speak the truth. And we have to be honest. We cannot develop a country backwards. So in order for us to move forward, we have to be honest with ourselves and have an open conversation and really speak truth. What is holding African nations back? Well, that's something we can discuss in season two of this podcast. Thank you for once again listening to this podcast and I hope you guys stay tuned as we commence the new season with more interesting topic. Like I said, I promise that in the next season, we'll have someone as a guest on this show. So once again, thank you for listening and have a great day. Bye-bye.